Hello, and welcome to Tonalist Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is um, called Creek at Dusk. It's a 12 by 16. And we, uh, we did the study for this last week. This is the larger version. Generally, um, I feel like 12 by 16 is a little too skinny for... Um, you know, a portrait type of landscape, <laughs> portrait, uh, portrait type of landscape being a kind of a contradiction since, you know, landscape refers generally to something horizontal, but you get what I'm saying. It's a vertical landscape. And, um, but for some reason, uh, last year, I think, uh, my, uh, the guy that does my, uh, boards, um, uh, I think he, I don't know what happened. Either he screwed up or I screwed up and I ended up with like, three or four 12 by 16 verticals and uh, I've done another painting um, that was uh, kind of a river scene uh, this is a creek but um, well that was probably a bit of a creek as well you know yeah I, I, I admit to a certain amount of flexibility when naming I might call it a river a stream and the stream a river or a river a creek or whatever I'm not uh, all that clear on the distinctions anyway I guess generally a river is just bigger but um, Anyway, I've had these around, and uh, um, actually, they, they work okay as a vertical. My preference is for a proportion more around um, 11 by 14 or so, but, you know, I'm not going to waste the boards or cut them down, so that's why uh, I did this uh, 12 by 16, and uh, I really do like 12 by 16 as a hor horizontal size, as a matter of fact. I've been phasing out the 10 by 14s, which I'm very keen on, but um, in, in an effort to, um, you know, have my, uh, make my paintings larger and larger, uh, I uh, am, uh, the last time I went to the ply guy, uh, the smallest size I ordered was, uh, well, the smartest, the smallest um, horizontal format I ordered was uh, 12 by 16, and, um, I'm still doing 11 by 14s as verticals, though. I really like that proportion for verticals. And, you know, proportions uh, are very important because every painting is really defined primarily by the um, dimensions of the, or proportions of the, um, the frame. And even though there is not what we would call a frame around this, it is indeed a frame. You know, it's a rectangular area that's defining um, the scene and that is the place where the painting starts so it's very important and different proportions give you a very different feel um, I was doing a, about a, two years ago I was doing nothing but 8 by 10s because um, my reasoning was that uh, I kind of live in an economically depressed area so I thought, well, I'll just do small paintings that are affordable for people, and 8x10 is good because I can get ready-made frames that uh, are also affordable. Only you'd be surprised, you know, a lot of times it costs as much to to frame uh, one of my paintings as the painting itself costs, so that's, uh, that's not good. And um, especially when you're getting down in these smaller sizes, you know, as you get larger, uh, of course, the uh, paintings take longer. Oh, pardon me, I'm going to have a sip of coffee here. Uh, it's Sunday morning, and uh, today is June 25th, 2017. And uh, fortunately, I just made a discovery when uh, dragging this... Um, uh, my archived movie into the uh, into the uh, the template here that I've set up for this um, you know YouTube blogging and um, apparently I dropped a whole bunch of resolution uh, in the process of archiving the movies sort of a big mistake but what can you do all of the um, the uh, constituent files have been long ago deleted and uh it just kind of sucks fortunately i think it was only four four uh movies but uh 
I gotta put this on my list of things to double check. So uh, these are actually uh, rendered at 720 by mm, I don't know uh, 1024, I believe, which is still considered high def, but. Uh, I generally work at something uh, a much larger with the videos, uh, at least for my archive format. But okay, sera sera. That's you know the one of the downsides to the videotaping is every now and again I screw up, and uh, this is probably a preferable screw up to the uh, screw up of hitting the camera um, with my elbow or something while painting, and uh, not being able to record the process at all. And and ultimately, I mean, how many? Uh, generations of painters have come before that were not able to capture their process even remotely and you know here I am worrying about missing one here or there so it's a bit silly but you know that's technology for you and <clears throat> I am uh, and I have talked a bit before about you know how I think it's it's great that I can capture the the process by which I'm creating the work stroke by stroke it's it's a uh, document that uh, it functions in a whole different way than the actual painting. The actual painting, of course, is the crucial thing, not the um, the representation of it in digital media, either as a photograph or even as a video. Um, but the video, of course, is linear and um, is a record of time, whereas the painting actually is a record of far more. You know, it's it's got all the uh, brush strokes that uh, occurred over time that are embedded into it, of course, but but also a um, a record it, it embedded into it is um, my my consciousness, my being, um, and that is reflected in the original painting object. And uh, it's easy to lose sight of this uh, in the era of the rampant reproduction. I was talking to a friend of mine while we were having coffee the other day and uh, remarking how we, we have, you know, the equivalent of a Walmart out here. It's called Warehouse, you know, and I'm walking by and you see this um, photo stretched on a canvas for 10 bucks, you know, a, a beach scene and... Uh, the words in gold leaf on top saying love it you know ten bucks you can get that for you can put that up on your wall and you'll have something up there on your wall and uh, it's all part of the 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 modern era I mean we have uh, such easy access to reproductions that now it's not even funny when I was a kid you, color reproductions were uh, an expensive thing and color uh, even when I was a young man I was working at uh, various frame shops and uh, and galleries and things and you know uh, reproductions were expensive they were signed and numbered and um, it, it cost you quite a lot of money to have color separations done and high quality photography and then to have it printed you would have to have a good sized quantity of prints done because the only real process that was available was offset printing um, which was expensive and while well, your poster you could get a nice poster of a painting for you know 30 bucks and uh, of course that was the retail um, it was still um, that was a mass market thing I mean the reason it was 30 bucks is because they printed thousands of them and uh, these days, I mean, you can take almost any, any image off of the uh, internet and, uh, you know, put it, pull it up on your computer, do a little tweaking and print it out on your inkjet. You can even print it out on canvas yourself. I've done that and uh, I played around uh, quite a lot with that. Um, early on when I uh, moved into my studio at the Quarry Art Center, uh, I got away from it because mm, a big part of the reason that I paint is a response to the digital era and the ease, uh, easy access of reproductions and this is why I don't put I do little uh, I call them note cards but they're basically small prints that are mounted to a piece of map board um, and I, I keep them in plastic and I sell them very reasonably to tourists and this just gives me something uh, affordable but I mean I could put signed and numbered on there and and try and get more money for them but <clears throat> I think that game's over 
um, there are still artists out there playing the game, but unfortunately, it just muddies the water. And in this era where um, digital uh, technology is so rampant and machines can do so many things that humans used to do, uh, it, producing a piece of original artwork is something a human is still the province of a, of a human being, and um, it's valuable, intrinsically valuable. And uh, I think uh, if you're an artist and you're trying to make it with reproductions, you know, I think it's it's silly at this point. I think you should be selling your originals, and if you're selling them for what you have to sell them for, but or um, you know, if you do reproductions, like I say, they should be you know priced in a way that's very affordable for people that just don't have the money to buy an original. And uh, unfortunately, that too is. A heck of a lot of people, especially out here where I live in uh, New Zealand in the north, you know, it's not a lot of money out here, or, or a lot of sophisticated art buyers. But mm, case sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. Anyway, um, we talked a little yesterday about how it's going in the studio. We got maybe you know four, three or four minutes left in this video. Uh, it's going okay. Um, I. I have had uh, some, you know, successes and failures, and you know, the failures coming after quite a raft of successes. It's always a bit of a bitter pill, but you know, this is again part of the reason why an original is a uh, a valuable thing. You know, you can. Um, I always set out with the best of intentions to create a masterpiece, but I don't always succeed, and uh, that's because there's such a multitude of things that go into making a great painting great it's not even funny as a matter of fact um, I think I was talking a bit last week about how I'd recently run across a lot of Francis Murphy images that I'd never seen before and I was quite surprised how um, you know a lot of them were kind of like what we call a pot boiler you know it was it was clearly less inspired work than some of the things that I was real familiar with which would have been the cream of his um, output uh, but still very good and you know I'm sure they were all sold and he was making making a living and you know there's no problem there but it's a challenge for all of us anyway I can see we're getting close to the end here um, you like my channel you like my videos click on the subscribe button okay uh, you can go to my website, that's landscapepainter.co.nz, or nz, and uh, you can follow my blog through there. On the blog will be a nice detailed uh, version of this uh, painting we're, we're doing today, so you can check it out, and also a couple of zoom-ins to show the, um, the brushwork. So go check that out, and I will be back next week uh, with a... 25 days of tonalism peace and meanwhile um, take good care and stay out of trouble <laughs>